You know, he was voted one of the least effective senators when he served. I was voted the most effective legislator in the House. It'd be a good opportunity to get a commitment from the Speaker that he won't raid uh, the school aid fund. He was on education. The Democratic debate pointed barbs coming early and often as the gubernatorial candidates, Virg Bernero and Andy Dillon, went toe to toe and head to head only on Wood TV 8. You may have seen it here, and now we're taking you inside the debate with live team coverage. The moderator, Rick Albin, analyzing the impact. Mark Thompson with reaction. But first, we start live with 24 Hour News 8's Tony Taliavia, breaking it all down for us. Tony? Good evening, Brian. We were able to press the candidates on a couple of issues that they talked about. You mentioned some very pointed exchanges. A lot of that centered on the candidates questioning each other's record. Lansing Mayor Virg Bernero questioning the record of Speaker of the House Andy Dillon over his tenure leading the House during a state budget crisis and when Dillon criticized Mr. Uh, Bernero's tenure as Lansing Mayor. What I've done in May, as, as Mayor of Lansing is to create jobs. Lansing Mayor Virg Bernero says that track record is part of the reason why voters should put him in the governor's office. But State House Speaker Andy Dillon says overall the city of Lansing lost jobs under Bernero's leadership. Now, I'm not going to criticize him for that. The state has gone through tough times. Uh, but when he says he created 6,000 jobs and the jobs have actually shrunk, we have to question uh, what's been done in Lansing. That touched off what was probably the sharpest back and forth of the night. Well, the speaker talking about creating jobs is like BP talking about environmental cleanup. The Lansing mayor claims the speaker outsourced jobs. Dillon worked as a business turnaround specialist before coming to the legislature, where he says he created jobs. One of the job creation uh, companies you have on your uh, list of your 6,000 jobs you created was a company that I brought the investment for. As for specifics, Bernero says he'd create a moratorium on foreclosures. Dillon says state regulations need to be streamlined, and he touted his efforts in the legislature to create tax incentives for battery companies. And the speaker pushed his plan to cut state costs by pooling state employee health care. Lansing mayor called for a part-time legislature. Both touted alternative energy. As for wind farms in Lake Michigan, Dillon says there are questions about whether they would work in a lake that can freeze. But I'm not saying no, but I do think that the local people need to have control. Bernero says for alternative energy in general, the right places can be found when the community is involved. You're we pressed on specifics. In, you're supportive of putting those windmills in Lake Michigan. I'm supportive of doing that if it can be done environmentally, uh, environmentally correctly. Uh, uh, and, and if it works, you know, I think the technology is advancing. Uh, I'm certainly open to it. I'm not open, open to spoiling all of our scenic vistas. Of course not. This is pure Michigan. But well, there's going to be a balancing act here. Bernero says if we want to push forward with clean energy and avoid what's happening in the Gulf, he says we're going to have to make some tough choices as a state. We got a chance to question uh, the speaker, Andy Dillon, about something he proposed. He said the idea that we put kids in school from kindergarten to 12th grade is kind of an antiquated concept for when the economy was based on farms and later on factories. He says really the state needs to look at keeping kids in school for what would be a 14th grade. We asked him about it afterwards. He said really that's happening now as schools are working with community college. Both of these men said they support reinstating the Michigan Promise, the college scholarship, though Dillon says it really ought to be a loan if the students move out of state instead of a grant. Live at Grand Valley State University's downtown campus, Tony Tullivia, 24-Hour News 8. Thanks, Tony, for recapping the debate for us. Now that we know what was said, the big question is, what does it all mean? 24-hour news day political reporter, debate moderator Rick Elvin here with me in the newsroom to fill us in on that. I think the most important thing it means is that they got together. They were head-to-head -head for the first, maybe the only time. People in Michigan get a chance to see these two candidates and compare them, and I really do think that is. Fact is, there aren't going to be many meetings, and not to overplay the importance of such a debate, I think it's helpful for voters to be able to see that side-to-side -side comparison. Everybody wants to know who won. Well, I think politics is a lot like life. Showing up is about 50% of the battle. They did. Neither was injured by their performance. Who does it help? Bonero's name ID is lower than Dylan, as you would expect, so this kind of a broad-based exposure is no doubt helpful. On the other hand, this is the first time many people really heard Andy Dillon in depth. He has a name that they may be familiar with, but tonight may have been a larger dose of him than they have had in the past. So who won? Well, both candidates had a chance to distinguish themselves from the other, and for the first time, and maybe the only time in this kind of a forum, people in Michigan had a chance to look at these two candidates side by side, and in my book, 
that makes voters the winner. Now, don't forget, this is just the beginning. Our commitment to fo following decision 2010 continues with another debate, the Republican candidates for governor. And you still have your chance to get the questions in between now and Thursday night's debate. Just go to woodtv.com, to our Facebook site, or to Twitter. We want to know what you have to say. You came up with some great questions for tonight's debate. We assume you will again for Thursday night. We look forward to that. Let's go back up to you. Thank you, Rick. And as the debate went on, undecided Democrats watching it all unfold as they sat in the Wood TV studios, and we were there to get their first reactions. 24 Hour News 8's Mark Thompson continuing our live coverage from Studio Control right now. Mark? And Brian, we had a very diverse group tonight. Younger, older, male, female, from educators to small business owners. Here's what they thought about tonight's oh, debate. Hey, by show of hands, who believes that Lansing Mayor Verge Bonero won the debate? Two for Bonero, three for Dillon, and one not sure. Our panel of six concerned about several key issues, namely jobs and small business owner benefits, education, and unemployment. Jessica Lowry is a criminal defense attorney. I heard things that I liked, um, especially from Dillon, addressing you know, what's going to attract businesses to Michigan. Beth Halstead thought Bernero won the debate. She herself has been on a career roller coaster ride, losing her job at Meridian Manufacturing, going back to computer trade school, but not finding a job in her field. My main issue was the extended benefits of unemployment, which was answered by only one candidate. Um, so that kind of upset me. We featured Benjamin Robinson before. After losing his job, he started his own bagel shop. He felt both candidates fell short in addressing small business issues, but overall... I really agree more with Dylan in a lot of different ways and different aspects of what he was talking about. Bill Thomas is a former educator and advocate for senior issues and, like Bernero, is not in favor of an all-cuts budget. Michigan has been cutting taxes for... I don't know, 12 years or something, and um, it really hasn't gotten us very much, I think. One thing that Bernero said that I really liked was that he uh, will not raid the school aid fund to fund other things. I really didn't hear specifically anything in terms of broadband stimulus or um, small business and getting capital to small business, so more so from, from Dylan, but uh, not so much from Bernero because he was too busy uh, bickering. So who do you think won the debate? Well, that's the question on our Wood TV Facebook page, so make sure that you log on and join in the discussion. Back to you. Thank you, Mark. If you missed any of the debate, the candidates, the issues, we have it all online right now. Just go to woodtv.com. In just three days, the Republicans will be in town. We will be back live at Lucemore Auditorium on the campus of GVSU on Thursday, June 24th. Rick Snyder, the only GOP candidate for governor, will not attend.